night. Court of Appeal calls of arrest warrant against INEC chairman. In business, federal government to seek innovative funding measures for satellite acquisition. And on the foreign scene, explosion kills seven miners in Pakistan. A very warm evening to you. Thanks for joining us on Flagship News at 8 on Super Screen Television. I am Precious Amai. We begin now with a report that the Abuja Division of the Court of Appeal has called of the arrest warrant issued against che INEC chairman of, chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC Mahmoud Yakubu, by Justice Stephen Palm of the Federal High Court. According to the judge, since the matter has been adjourned to September 17 for hearing of the main appeal, it will be prejudicial for the trial court to proceed with hearing of the matter scheduled for August 14. He therefore unanimously ordered the stay of proceedings again pending the hearing of Mahmoud's appeal. You will recall that Justice Palm had ordered the arrest of Mahmoud. Still on court-related issues, the Federal High Court, Abuja, has adjourned until August 30th. The suit challenging the Presidential Executive Order 6 of 2018 on the preservation of assets connected with corruption and other related offences. The vacation judge, Justice Ijama Ujuku, fixed the date to allow the plaintiffs exhibit the order, which was a matter in contention, as well as ensure that all other processes were regularized. Counsel to the plaintiffs, Obed Agu, told the court that he had not attached the order to the processes he filed earlier because it was in custody of the defendant. Ujuku, however, asked him to apply for the order and make it available to the court before August 30th. On now to Benway politics, a Makodi High Court has granted an ex parte order restraining the Speaker of the Benway State House of Assembly, Taito Zuba, and five others from carrying out any legislative sitting and responsibilities pending the determination of the substantive suit. Justice Theresa Igoche, who had earlier restrained the impeached speaker while ruling on a separate ex parte motion brought by him, granted the order today. The judge adjourns to August 15th hearing on the substantive suit, which include the motion seeking to partially restrain Ikiangi as a speaker of the state assembly, having been impeached by the 22 lawmakers. You will recall that Ikiangi was impeached on July 24 after a motion of no confidence was moved by the lawmaker representing Konshisha State Constituency, Richard Ujigi. Suspected gunmen alleged to have attacked two commercial banks in Igara, the Akoko Edo headquarters in Edo State, have met with their Waterloo. The Commissioner of Police, Edo State, Johnson Kokumo, told journalists that they had a gun duel with the robbers, which led to their death. The report. Suspected gunmen alleged to have attacked two commercial banks in Igara, the Akoko Edo headquarters in Edo State, have met their Waterloo. State Commissioner of Police, Johnson Kokumo, who disclosed this to journalists at the state police headquarters, said the armed bandits shed themselves into two groups. One set engaged the police at the front of the police station in the community so as to prevent them from reinforcing to the bank, while others were carrying out the robbery. There were two banks in the office. Don't make me I just said to one another, one go for it, stop that, the second community bank. And the marauding the criminals actually attacked Kingston Bank. But we met with very stiff opposition from uh, policemen who are got duty, both at uh, the Unity Bank and the Kingston uh, Bank. Men of PMF 60, Edo State here, were able to give a very, very good account of uh, the stuff they are made up of. In the same vein, the Zone 5 of the Nigerian police also paraded about nine suspected car snatchers and a fake military officer in the state. Zone 5 PRO Emika Hihenacho said the suspects snatch cars from their owners and take it to the buyers in other states. August 10th, 
Oyin Naya, Kamadu Aka. Now, and two others, he has other gangs. He is a welder by profession, but he specializes in molding this master key. So where this car was parked, he used a master key and opened this car and drove away from beneath here. Through the resilience and of our officers, the men of anti-vice section of this zone, the vehicle was traced to Agwata in Anambra. So that was where they recovered the car. The original plate number of this car is Bini, but he changed the plate number and the engine and chassis number. This is a particular number now that he has faced to resell this car to another buyer before our main superstar. So we have recovered the vehicle and arrested him. Some of the suspects who confessed to their crimes narrated their involvement and rules. They said now you did two kids now. No. So how does he catch you? Catch me at one chance. Talk as well. Talk now. How does he catch you? Describe how does he catch you? They are calling me on phone now. Come and catch me. That's all. But you know they are wasting our stolen bags. I know. I don't know what to do. So how much they buy the car? About this is fifty thousand. Six hundred fifty thousand. I came to see him, so I didn't know that they has a case. So that was where they arrested me. Are you truly so just No. So why do you decide to involve in this kind of art? Only I, I do small items. Okay. I The People's Democratic Party, PDP, says it has uncovered a plot by the All Progressive Congress, APC, and a group in the presidency to use security agencies and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to invite, arrest, and detain the Senate President, Bukola Saraki, and his deputy, Ike Ekurumadu. The party, who disclosed this in a statement by his spokesman, Kola Logbondio, said the alleged plot to detain the two presiding officers is part of a renewed design to keep them out of circulation ahead of Senate's resumption. The party also claimed that it has unraveled fresh facts confirming that the pressure by the presidency for the reconvening of the Senate is out of an alleged sinister motive and not for any emergency in the approval of the budget of the Independent National Electoral Commission for the 2019 elections. Meanwhile, the All Progressive Congress, APC, has reacted to the latest alarm by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, of plots by the federal government to arrest Senate President Bukola Saraki and his deputy, Ike Ekure Madu. APC National Publicity Secretary, Yekini Nabena, who disclosed this in a statement, said the party had thought that by now, PDP would be tired of his baseless and frivolous accusations. He also said that President Muhammad Buhari's administration has repeatedly demonstrated its strict adherence to the rule of law, insisting that the alleged plan to arrest or harass the mentioned leaders is hogwash. A resident electoral commissioner, REC Wajubu Oji, says polling booths are henceforth to be positioned in a way to make it difficult for people to see how voters cast their votes during elections. Oji, who disclosed this to journalists, said the measure is to make it impossible for anyone, who know who, anyone to know who an electorate will vote for. He also said the commission is considering rearranging the way polling booths are positioned during elections to make it difficult for anybody to see the place a voter will vote. Oji said on it eligible persons who were yet to register in the ongoing continuous voter registration to do so before the August 17 deadline. Away from electoral matters now, job seekers have been advised not to wallow in self-pity, but think of taking steps to develop their inner skills. A cake baker, Dolagbo Jaluwoye, gave the charge in an exclusive interview with Super Screens Adenike Owoye Ajiboye in Lagos, while revealing her motivation into becoming a baker. I've never baked cake in my mother's house before in my life. I didn't do home economics in school. I didn't take any course about cake in my life before I entered into cake making. Job seekers got to find something to do. And if they try to find in themselves their interest, there's something there. I won't say everybody is cut out to make cakes, because if you ask me, 
25 years ago. Do I, will I do cake in my life? I'll probably say no because I didn't know where I was going then or I didn't know I would be here today. So, but at every point in their lives, they should check their interest and work on that interest. And in Meiduguri, fire has raised about 21 shops at Fresh Market in Meiduguri on Sunday night. The public relations officer of Borono State Fire Service, Anbosa Pidan, who disclosed this to journalists, said preliminary investigation into the incident indicated that an electrical spark from one of the shops in the market was the cause of the inferno. Pindar advised traders to exercise caution in the use of electrical appliances, adding that shop owners should always remember to switch off such appliances when leaving the market. He also stressed the importance of keeping fire extinguishers in their shops in order to save lives and property in the event of any fire outbreak. You're still watching Super Screen of Flagship News at 8. Coming up, federal government to seek innovative funding measures for satellites acquisition. There's more on business news when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us on the news. Now on business, the Minister of Communications, Adeba Yoshitu, says the federal government is searching for an innovative way to fund the acquisition of two new communication satellites for Nigerian Communications Satellite Limited. Shitu, who disclosed this in Abuja, said the new approach is necessary to minimize its impacts on other government programs and projects. The minister also urged private and public institutions across the country to patronize the satellite company in order to position it as a prime provider of satellite services across the African continent. Away from satellite now, the Acting Director General of Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, Mary Udwak, says the Capital Market Committee has extended the forbearance of multiple accounts to December 31st. In a statement issued by the Commission, Udwak enjoined investors in the capital market that bought shares with different names to regularize their accounts in order to get the benefits of their investments. Goodwork also said that following the completion of the work by the Committee on Minimum Operating Standard, the Commission would work with trade group associations to implement the Committee's recommendations. Still on business, the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative Meiti says a parliamentary group on Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative is to be established by the National Assembly. Executive Secretary of Meiti, Waziri Ado, who made this known, said the proposed parliamentary forum would help to coordinate the work of the various committees in addressing remedial issues in Meiti reports. Ado also said the group would be drawn from relevant committees in the Senate and the House of Representatives and will coordinate legislative actions on implementation of remedial issues identified by independent audit reports of native in the extractive industries. And still on the news, still ahead. Explosion kills seven miners in Pakistan. These are more on foreign and sports when we return. Stay with us.